Okay, so I have worked on the section with the front posts. Um, remember as well that when you do a front post, you go under with your hook, and then once the post is at the front of your hook, then you know you're doing it right. If it was the opposite way around, obviously that, that would be at the back. Um, so I've worked each row, leaving one moss stitch um, free. But when I've come to the end, I have found on each corner that there isn't this spare one here. So I have to just work straight into this one, leaving just two double crochets there. This will be written into the pattern, but just so you're aware. So here you just follow, here it doesn't, okay? Doesn't matter how many tries I've tried it, it doesn't work um, that way. So I'm going with it. As long as it looks neat, as long as it looks nice and symmetrical, it's fine. Um, so the next thing is really just to do another double crochet border just to give this a nice thickness. So just in case some of you are struggling, because I know I have a couple of followers um, that have some impairments, and I just want you to know that I love you to bits. <laughs> I love you to bits, so I'm just going to help you a little bit more. So anybody that's watching this, um, you know, you can skip this bit if you like. But for those who've got a couple of limitations, who just need that little bit of extra help, that's what I'm going to do. So I've attached my row with a slip stitch into that last stitch which is there I'm going to slip stitch again into the next row because when you do a double crochet you are going to forget that you've done it so let's just do a slip stitch just to manoeuvre the stitch that way a bit more then we're going to go back in and we're going to do a double crochet like so and that should allow that to sit a little bit prouder now as a reminder I'm going to find my stitch markers I didn't bring my bag upstairs <laughs> um, I have got a stitch marker in here mm. right I want you to put a stitch marker here regardless of whatever happens in this moment I want you to put a stitch marker there I know that you're going to forget and you're going to work over it and you're going to wonder why you've worked over it so for those of you who struggle a little bit this is my this is the section for you to put a stitch marker in I found my stitch marker that was already in my blanket just put it in there as a reminder now I want you to do that on every start of every row so that you don't forget okay and then we're going to work two double crochets into this space sorry there isn't two double crochets into this space because we're doing yes there is oh crikey wakey wakey <laughs> two double crochets two chains and then two crochets and then what we're going to do is we're going to work a double crochet into each stitch head and then we're going to um, work a half treble into this space just to elongate and give it a bit more structure okay so one two now the one that I went into then just so you know um, is this one here to the left of this stitch so that stitch head there I don't normally go into it but I'm going to go into it this time so that one there and then that one there. Three, four, five. And then this is the one that belongs to this stitch. So you don't do here. So just so you know, just because that's there, you've just done that stitch. Because remember what we said before in the previous videos? That stitch head there belongs to this post here. And this stitch here belongs to this post here, right? So we've worked that one. We now need to work a half treble into that one, okay, around that post, okay. So it sits like that. Can you see how that's nice and elongated now? So let's just do that again so you're aware and you can see how that has filled that space, okay. Can you see that if it comes back into focus? <gasps> Naughty camera. So let's just do it again. So if you're watching this and you are confused right now, I want you to slow down and I want you to watch what I'm doing properly. Okay, right, so we have worked how many? Let's look. One, two into the corner, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven into that corner. Now it's going to be different on this side because it's not equal. But on this side, there's seven. Now you're going to think we've got to work this front post. Now where do I put, do I work into this stitch here? Well, you've already worked it. It's there. It's to the 
right hand side sewing, not left hand side, right hand side. It's going to look like you've got a spare stitch head here to work into. Well it isn't because that stitch head there belongs to this post here. So pick up your yarn, pick up your post so it's in front, you've gone underneath it and then go around like so. Okay? And then you just work one two and three so you know that there's three between there so you don't need to work anymore again it's going to look the same again you might speed along and make a mistake here there is only three between the stitch posts yarn over you're doing a half treble go underneath that post pick up your yarn and then pull all the way through now if you are struggling for any particular reason slow down take a breath find your comfortable space Place, 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 can't speak. Your comfortable place, slow down. Take a moment. If you're getting frustrated because you have limitations for whatever reason and it's making you struggle, just slow down. There is no rush. You can do this. I know you can do this. So it's okay. Just take your time. Don't get frustrated and I'll come back to you in a moment when we finish this section. Okay, so I've put back on. I haven't finished all of it. I'm having a bit of a wobble with my wall, if I'm honest. Um, but I thought I'd pop back on and just see how you're getting on. So I know obviously you're stopping and pausing the video, so it's not really alive. But even so, let's just make sure you're where you need to be. So, as you can see, I've done my double crochets and they're giving me this nice texture here, which I'm pretty pleased about. I'm getting these nice elongated posts. So let's just have a few minutes or a few seconds where we just work together. So I've done three double crochets there, can you see? And I'm just going to work that half treble again. I just want to make sure that we finish together. So let's double crochet into this one. So if you're wondering where is the next stitch head, because you can see what looks like four there, it's this one right here, right next to the post. So the one that belongs to the post is further away. But this one here, to the right hand side of this post here, is where we're going to be working. So double crochet into there. Like I say, take your time. There is no rush. You can do this. So if you're struggling, just bear with yourself. Be kind to yourself. So double crochet into there. And just work those three. Sorry about the sound of my fan as well. It's really noisy, but I, I simply can't have it can't not have it on so if you're watching this in the middle of the winter <laughs> and you're wondering why it's in the dead of summer in the UK and it's getting hot and my house is facing the sun right now so double crochet so we've done our three there half treble under that post pull your wool through and then so we're coming to the end now of this this side so we'll coming up to our corner space and then underneath one two three and then double crochet double crochet double crochet that's three double crochets there under that post so you're there look under it and then just work that half treble oh, I lost my stitch start again one two three and that we're just here so we're at the post at the moment that doesn't have that extra stitch there it's just at the very last one again these things happen so as long as it works with the design it's absolutely fine and it worked it did the same on every row so that tells you something so one two three four and then our double crochets into the corner one two and then two more onto this side and then it's just a case of working the same again so that's one complete side oh Ding dong. 
think I'm almost, no, I've got two more sides to do, but I thought it'd be worth just kind of catching up with you just to quick then. So I will, the next stage will be the next row after this and then we'll recap. Okay, my lovelies, I'm just going to frog back this section because I started doing it, but then I thought, what well, this is the next row that will be. I think it's getting a bit bigger now. Um, let me just move that over there. So I'm going to frog it back and then I'm going to start it with you um, because I think that's going to make much more sense. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach my yarn. So if you've watched any of the videos, chapter one, chapter two, you will see this is how I attach my yarn without using a slip stitch. So you don't have to do it like this. So if it is that you prefer to do a slip stitch, please use your preferred way. If you want to try this method, try this method, but it is not the only method. So if you're what doing this now, if you're trying this out, please just remember, do it your way. So what I do, wool in hand, tail end here. I pinch that against my wool, so I've got it in position, just like you would if you were sewing. Okay, then you pick up the wool and you pull through. No, it's not attached, it's just pulled through. I've anchored it there, the wool's pulled through put your yarn again go through again okay that is a quick slip stitch but again if you are loose um, I just pull down on that towel just to anchor it in the next thing we're going to do we're going to do a standing stitch so a standing stitch let me just pull my this down a little bit more for you to see and in the hopes that it'll auto frame go back through while you're anchoring this tail and make what looks like a double crochet okay that is a double crochet. Then take your hook, no wool on it other than the loop, go through, so you've got one, two loops there, go through the bottom loop. Pick up your yarn and pull back through. Pick up your yarn and only pull through the first loop and then pull through the last two loops and that is your standing stitch. Okay? And that is a half treble standing stitch. Then make your next half treble And then one, two, and then your next half treble. Now it's a bit easy to find the um, to come back to the start of your row because it stands quite proud and it's a different colour. So you won't need a stitch marker, I don't think, there. We're going to skip the first one here and work directly into this one here because we've worked multiples into the corner. So we want it to sit nice and tight, okay? And then just work a half treble into every stitch head until the will crack it. I swear my fan's getting louder. <laughs> oh, I can't help it. Sorry, it's so hot. Honestly, I feel like somebody's got an, the heater on behind me. I think there's a storm brewing in the distance as well. So if you're from the US, Canada, or you're from Europe, um, other places in Europe, um, we are based in the middle of the UK. So if you think Lord of the Rings, think Mordor. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. But pretty much we're kind of located not far from there. We're in a place in the West Midlands um, is our county. And we are based outside of a village called Gornal. Um, which apparently has the oldest dialect um, of early English. We still, um, our accent is apparently the oldest version of you, the English language. So you can see how that's we're looking really nice. We're not doing any back posts because what we're going to come back to do in a bit is we're going to do that one last row and we're going to do back posts. So it pushes that and frames that out nicely. So... So if you're finding that you're um, loose with your wool, it may be one or two things. Um, it may be that you're using a hook that's far too big, or it may be that you are holding your wool far too loosely. I say one or two things, actually could be one of three things, is anchoring. Because it depends on how you're anchoring, so it depends how 
controlled you are with your anchoring. In other words, how are you holding your make as you're making? So if you watch my hand um, and how I'm holding the wall, um, I've lost my stitch head. You'll see that I have the wall running through my fingers like this. I don't wrap multi wrap, that's just not for me. But you might find if yours is going through too fast, you may need to do that. Um, and I'm making sure that I'm holding my wall, so I'm not really letting go of my wall. And if it is that I go, oh, I need to go and do that now, and I've put that down, I usually put my hook back in there. So I put my hook, so it's in between my thumb and my index finger, pull my wall tight again, and then straight away look from there to there so as soon as I've got my wall so sorry as soon as I've got my hook even then I'm holding my hook and I'm anchoring so and nothing can move out of position and straight away I pinch down so from there to there these are all little things that you don't think about until you watch somebody working and we have got some crochet classes coming up soon or oh, I've done double crochet um, so again, I'll be back to watching people work and how you work. Oh, wrong again. And a lot of what we do in our beginners crochet classes, so if you are watching this and you are wanting to learn um, or to perfect what you do, a lot of what we do is we actually watch you work and we watch how you're holding things. And generally, the biggest um, issues we face is how you're holding your wall and how you're anchoring. Um, because once you get you come to terms with how something feels in your fingers it's easy for you to get nice consistent change like now for me um, everything's kind of consistent it looks the same and I will tell you now it never it didn't always it didn't always feel like that and as soon as I realized it was how I was holding my wall it was how I was anchoring it was how I was positioning myself it was even down to the hook I was using. Because you can't just use any hook. Yes, I know. I've got a lovely spankly one here now. But um, it was even down to the hook I was using. So when I started to realise, oh, there's other hooks, there's other shapes. And again, what worked for one person didn't work for me. Um, a lot of people love um, the clover. I forgot what they're called. Not clover more. Um, the flatbed clover. The very, the, a lot of Japanese people use this particular brand. For me, I found that a bit more difficult because they were shorter, they were flatter, and I found it a little bit awkward, and I wasn't getting consistency. But then as soon as I had um, a soft grip hook, straight away I noticed a difference, and it worked for me. Now, everybody's different. Everybody's different. So don't feel that you've got to have the most spankly hook. I've invested in my hooks because I've been doing this a long time, so I can afford to do that. It isn't an investment you need to do as a beginner. But again, if someone's buying you a present and they want to know what to buy it, well, you know what to do. <laughs> Have a list. Because <laughs> you will forget. This is a hook from a local company. Um, it's handcrafted and it's from Boltec. And they're not sponsoring me, no. Um, this is the first hook I've had from them. And I have to say, I feel the need to buy another. And do I prefer it over my furls? Mm, I like my furls, but I must admit, this, this feels really nice. It's a nice length, and it just works really well. And the feel of the wood is lovely. It's very warm on my hands. So if you have any issues with arthritis, anything like that, this is a good hook to use. So I'm not going to stand here any longer because obviously I'm wasting minutes just having a chat with you. But I thought it might be worth having a little chat um, because I think you need to, one, recognise that you try. if you are trying something new, it's always a learning curve. It's no, the, the first one is never going to be the best one. Hence why I always say use scrap wool first, then come back to it. Practice on two at the same time because at least then if you make any, have any issues, you're not using your main wool. That way, if you have got any impairments, any limitations, any... Um, I'm not going to say learning difficulties because I think we have this stereotype when we say learning difficulties but things that inhibit our learning ability um, not because you're incapable but because you have something that um, how can I put it how can I put it how can I describe it I believe that everybody can learn the same everybody can learn anything but some of us are wearing different shoes so, for instance, if you were sprinting, you would need running shoes. And some people naturally have 
a good running style. They have um, trainers. They have everything they need, which enables them to move fast. But imagine if you were having to run, and you can run, but you had to wear wellies. Your speed would be different, wouldn't it? The way in which you run would be different because you'd have to compensate for the shoe type that you're wearing. And that's sometimes what learning difficulties can do. It's not that you can't, it's just that you have to do it differently. You have to find a different rhythm, you have to find a different method. But if you take your time, if you think it through, you can do it. You have to work with yourself, not against yourself. So if you're somebody that does have those limitations, I would personally say have some scrap wool and kind of make the blanket in scraps. And then when you you kind of got your head around it, have a go on the next row on the one that the wool that you like. So at least then you've warmed yourself up and you can work in that process. I know it's a longer process, but if it gets you the results that you're hoping for, why not? So, right, we'll pause here and I'll meet you back in a bit. Okay, so I'm back. Taking off this row here. So again, just neaten up my wool, get myself into position, as should you. <laughs> okay, this blanket's getting big now. Wow. So we're just finishing off those half trebles, like so. Okay. Yep, just working those half trebles into the end and then we'll finish that row. So these are always the bits that become a little bit difficult is where you've slipped stitch before. Can you see that? This is one of the reasons why I wanted to work with you on this. Um, so try and get it back into there. Oh, a little bit of a tail. And then just work over that knot so you can see I've gone through that centre, bypassed that and worked straight into there and then it looks nice and neat. I'm also picking up the tail there. So if you're not sure where your stitch head lies, just separate your posts out a little bit like that and then you can find those holes. So there you go. So that's that one done. And then we need to just work into our standing stitch. So we take up the, the top row, making sure we've got two loops over there and then work through and that's that. So now we're on to the last row of chapter three. So I've just cut that off, pulled it through, make sure it's secure and we're going to be working in frost blue. So for you, for me that will be mauve but for you that will be frost blue and I think at this stage as well guys I think it might be worth as well within chapter three make sure you're doing all your weaving in. I think it'd be nice to come back to chapter four <laughs> and not have all these bits because they get a bit confusing so use this opportunity now to make sure you're neatening up your project so that you'll be ready for the next rounds because when we get to the very last chapter things are going to get a bit complicated and we're going to have to take that stage by stage okay so I've decided I was going to do the next row here in this chapter but I've decided that actually we'll worry about that next chapter because we've got quite a bit to do in this chapter here and then the chapter after that will be really easy. So I think in chapter four, we'll probably be working on this. So you're going to get a bigger stint of what needs to be done. But for now, we're going to keep this simple here because of what we've got to do in the next row. So for now, we'll be stopping here on the pink. And then in chapter four, we'll resume the frost blue, the bobble stitches, and then the granny square bits um, here. And then we're going to have a bit, I think this is going to be broken down into two chapters. So I think that's everything, I think, for chapter three. I'm glad that you've been following along with me. Use this opportunity, like I said, to um, neaten up your stitches and, you know, make sure that, you know, you're, you're weaving in. Have a recheck of things. Make sure you're happy with everything, how it's going, um, so that when you come to do your... Um, sorry, making sure that you come to do your finished item that everything's in place, count your rows, all that kind of thing. So just check, um, okay? I think the worst is over um, in regards to making sure everything lines up. Um, uh, you will have the bobble stitches, but again, that is just a case of turning things over and granny squares. Obviously the hardest bit will be our border, but we'll worry about that when it comes to it because 
it looks more complex than it is. But I think, as in all, I think if you've got to this stage and everything else, I think you're doing absolutely marvellous. So don't worry. Don't forget to be in our group on our website. Um, we have a group allocated for the Cherry Bakewell. So if you ha are hitting any difficulties, please don't be embarrassed. Don't feel you're asking a silly question. We want to help. So please, and, and those who are making it who are further advanced maybe than yourself can actually offer you some tips and guidance where needed as well. It is a community project. It is a crochet along. And it's a crochet along because other people are working with you at the, uh, roughly around the same time. So there you go, my lovelies. Anyway, without further ado, we will see you in, on chapter four. And I better go and edit some work now. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please check over our website and our social media pages and you can enjoy our free blog pattern that goes with this video. There you go. Bye.